Okay, so today we're going to talk about biomedical devices and biomaterials. Essentially, new parts for old. When you start to break down, we're going to build you back up again. Alright, so first off, bionics. Now, bionics is basically the study of mechanical systems um, and materials that behave like organs or even whole organ systems. Now, just here, we have you know, this, this guy here. He, he's pretty much labeling all of the different parts which can be replaced or augmented. Uh, so a biomedical device is essentially something that you use to replace a part or fix a part. So replace in concept context of lenses or fix, you know, fasten together in context of broken bones. Uh, now the materials, these are the, the biomaterials we use. They're substances that are able to be integrated and very importantly tolerated by the body. Um, occasionally you hear stories of someone who's had a bit of metal lodged in their arm and the muscle and it just over time works its way out and pops out of the skin. That's not being tolerated. So the materials we use, first we can use the metals and you can see um, here is a hip replacement in an Here's a hip replacement in a um, in an X-ray. So that most metals have been used, most readily available metals anyway. Uh, but there are actually very few which are safe or non-toxic. Lead was a big one that was used for a long time, and that led to a lot of people dying very early due to lead poisoning. So the most common ones we use are titanium iron alloys, which these are your steels, and cobalt alloys. All right, so. Ceramics like your glasses and plates and cups, like they're very much used. They they tend to be strong, not very strong. You know, like they're not a load bearing deal, but they they're strong. They're rigid. They're non flexible. Uh, they don't rust, so they're corrosion resistant, and they're very low density. So your metals are often quite heavy, whereas your low density ceramics they're fairly light. They're we call bioactive, which means there is a reaction between the glass or the ceramics and the body fluids and this makes a living layer form between say the ceramics and the bone or ceramics and whatever it's attached to and this, this is a particularly strong form of bonding it's not suitable for long-term load bearing so you wouldn't use it to join up your your femur because that's a bone that uses a lot of you know deals with a lot of stress so plastics this is the golden age to be honest like plastics are kind of where it's at so we're talking synthetic polymers polymers you know long chains of molecules um but in particular designer plastics what that means is you really can build a plastic to fit exactly what you need um and there's lots and lots that we use uh thousands really and they're all they all have different properties and strengths so polyethylene uh that's that's the main one and variations of it is long linear branched organic molecule and silicones. Now it's not silicon, silicones. Uh, it basically it's a polymer containing silicon. Uh, generally when we see there's the oily liquids or rubbery substances. Generally though, they're rubbery substances when they're used as a biomaterial. They have a very long lifespan, hundreds of years, like they'll last much, much longer than you do. And they're not damaged by radiation, UV radiation in particular, which we use to sterilize medical equipment. All right, the first one's going to talk about pins, screws, and plates. Now, this, before we move on, this is just an overview of the whole thing, and we're going to move more deeply in the future videos into each area, okay? So, generally, pins and screws and plates are used to help fraction bones. I don't even know what else they would be used for. So, pins. These are the most common and also the most versatile implant. Um, and it's basically, you use it to fix bone fragments together. Uh, it's used when it's difficult to obtain stability in a fracture, so if the bone keeps moving apart, you can pin them together. Screws, they're, like, they're widely widely used, and you'll see why in a second, and that's because they're used to fix plates to bones, and we'll have a look at a picture in a second. Um, a bone plate, they're, they're really strong, solid bits of metal, uh, and they absorb the large stress generated uh, stress from using those bones. So if you're, you know, if you've got a plate on a bone, it's going to be a bone that 
is a load bearing bone. Um, and, and again, they fix the bone with screws. So here we've got a couple of examples. Uh, this one here is a dog, I think. Yep, a dog. A little puppy dog, actually. He's quite young. And you can see how it's a very serious break. Um, surprised they just put him down. And a long plate along that way. That's, that's your plate and all the bolts go in. And here it is on a human. Same thing. Again, you can see that it looks a bit fancier. This is a pin right there. And these are the screws that hold it in. Joints, um, we we replace joints with biomedical devices when it's either you know, degenerative diseases or damage from an accident. So most common, it's the knee, hip, and shoulder joints. Artificial hip joints are often made from stainless steel and polyethylene combination or a cobalt chromium alloy and polyethylene combination. So the artificial knee joints can sink into and crush the lower leg bone. That's a that's called the trabecular bone. That's actually the problem with knee replacements. Uh, and they used to be used with just steel. However, now they're made from an ultra high molecular weight, that's UH, UHMW, polyethylene, on a metal base. And we'll get into that again. We're going to deal with joints later on. Little fiddly bones, joints such as your fingers and your ankles, they're a lot harder for replacements, like just because they are quite complex in how they move. I mean, hip and shoulder are just ball joints. Okay, you know, they're the simplest of all. Pacemakers, they correct arrhythmias. There's a word you need to know what that means. So an arrhythmia is essentially a offbeat heart. So sorry, sorry, an out of sync heartbeat. You know, too fast, too slow, or irregular. And they stimulate through little zaps to make the heart beat regularly. And they can be either outside of your body, which is less common these days, or internal. So external or internal. The other part with the heart that we can replace, aside from the whole heart, are valves. These are, we replace damaged valves that no longer work to allow blood to flow in only one direction. That's what a valve does. Okay, so if you've got a valve here, okay, you can see that that will fold out this way, and this will fold out this way. But if blood tries to flow that way, it will collapse in on itself here. So blood can actually only travel in the one direction through that valve. Now, that's what a valve does. And when they when they break, we, we need to replace them. If they're leaky or they've, they're blocked, and we can replace them with, with porcine, porcine valves, pigs, bovine valves, cows, or artificial ones. Teeth, so we've got crowns, the caps that placed over the top of your either natural or artificial root system. An artificial root system is a screw that goes down into your teeth, uh, into your jaw. Uh, traditionally, they they were ceramic, but they're not the strongest. Like They're a bit brittle, so they've replaced them with metal ceramic combinations to increase the strength of it. Now, there's dentures, which are false teeth. They're generally acrylic, uh, and that is simply to make them easy to manufacture. But there are problems. First, they're not particularly stable. Uh, they don't always look natural. And they allow the jawbone to absorb substances, which, again, we'll get into later on. The lens. There's a great video on the the wiki as well to see. A, if you need to see a video of a lens being installed, just YouTube it. There's tons of them. It's amazing. So artificial lenses restore functions of the eye, or the lens in particular, where cataracts cause it to go cloudy, so no light gets to go through. Now, they're currently made of uh, a PMMA, Silicon rubber or copolymer blends, and that includes nylon, dacron. Uh, it's, you'll see it's capitalized, and that's because it's a proper noun, uh, polypropylene. There are also little loops that you can see here that hold it in place. There are two types of implants they're non foldable and foldable. Here, you'll see we have a foldable one that they cut a little hole, fold it in half, slide in, and then it pops out. Um, now, the non fold ones are the PMA, PMMA, which is a hard plastic. Fold ones tend to be silicone. Again, it's a flexible rubbery thing, or acrylic, but usually silicone. Prosthetic limbs. Um, these are artificial limbs we use to replace either entire limbs or parts of on amputees, people born without limbs. Less so people born without limbs, apparently, uh, but definitely amputees from accidents, etc. Now, 
materials that are sometimes used. Uh, so you've got silicone or silicon matrix. That's the soft part for the liners. But then you, you use the titaniums and the aluminiums and the stainless steels and the carbon fibers, etc., to make the the limb itself super strong. Now, as we've as we've moved along in time, modern limbs they're not just uh, like a, a wooden peg leg or or a prosthetic plastic leg. They have electronics in them um, and pneumatics. Which, if we go back here, this is a pneumatic device inside. Okay, so they're much more complex than they used to be. Hearing, you've got hearing aids or cochlear cochlear implants. You're going to do a bit of research on cochlear implants. We're not going to focus too heavily on it right now. Here, in particular, is where it all happens. Um, we'll get into more of that later on. All right. Good luck. See you in class.